Watch this video to learn how to prepare and pre-validate a dealing. Once you've created your dealing, you're ready to prepare your instruments. We'll start with the discharge of mortgage. There are a few ways to launch the prepare instrument page, but when the instrument is collapsed, simply select the instrument hyperlink to open the page. Complete all fields which are marked by a red asterisk for successful pre-validation. The affected instrument field will auto-populate where there is only one mortgage registered on the title, but it's always good to check this is correct. When there's more than one potential instrument, the affected instrument field will be blank. In this case, select the relevant affected instrument from the drop-down list. The mortgagee automatically displays in read-only mode based on the selected affected instrument. By default, the Reserve Personal Covenants box is checked. Uncheck if the parties haven't made these arrangements relating to the rights and remedies of the mortgagee. The Summary tab will automatically display the key instrument details. Select the Preview Instrument button if you need to print, download or preview the full instrument preview. We'll now pre-validate this instrument. You can pre-validate an instrument at any time and as often as you want before submitting your dealing. This doesn't incur any fees. Select the pre-validation button to pre-validate the instrument. Pre-validation checks run in the background and the result will be visible in the pre-validation tab. If the instrument fails pre-validation, the pre-validation button at the bottom of the page will be red, and you will see either a red circle with an exclamation mark next to the pre-validation tab heading, which indicates a failure, or an orange triangle with an exclamation mark, which indicates a warning. Fix the errors and then pre-validate the instrument again. We'll now prepare our next instrument. Select Save and Back to return to the previous page. Select Transfer to prepare the transfer instrument. On the Prepare Transfer page, the Transferee section defaults to Sole or Joint Tenants. You can add in as many joint tenants as needed, using these buttons to add Private Individual or Add Corporate. We'll now add in the names of our transferees. You can also change an individual to a corporate, or vice versa using these buttons. If the ownership will be as tenants in common or combination, toggle across here. You can see there is an additional share box to the right of the transferees, which allows you to add shares in the form of a fraction. There is also the option to create groups for a combination ownership structure. This would be used in situations where two or more people will jointly own a share in the property. So now that we've added our transferees, we'll assign them a one-third share each to equal one whole share. Use the three-dot menu at the end of each of the rows to make changes to the transferees. If the transfer is bound by a fencing covenant, check this box. Before leaving this page, we need to save it to invoke the resulting ownership structure on the Summary tab. We'll now prepare our final instrument, the mortgage. The Mortgagee section defaults to Single or Joint, but you can select Shares where two or more mortgagees hold the mortgage as tenants in common. 
shares can be entered as a fraction, whole number or dollar value. And you can also use the group function here. For this example, we'll just add a single mortgagee. Click in the name field and select the mortgagee from the list. The most common lenders are listed first. You can also narrow the list by starting to type part of the name of your client's lender. If they're not a common lender, you may need to type their full name into the field. If we've linked any mortgage memoranda to your client's lender, these will appear first on the drop-down list. You can alternatively type in a mortgage memorandum number. By default, all obligations are selected, but you can toggle to fixed sum and enter the required details. Enter the priority amount into this field. This field is alphanumeric, but you don't need to add a dollar sign as it already appears in the field name. We'll now pre-validate the dealing. Select the save and back button. We can see the discharge of mortgage has a tick and a pre-val column, confirming that it has pre-validated successfully. To pre-validate the dealing, select the pre-validate dealing tab from the left-hand navigation bar. You have two options to pre-validate the dealing. Either select the arrow near the top of the page or select the Run Pre-Validation on Dealing button at the bottom of the page. If the dealing passes pre-validation, the page displays with a green tick. When the dealing fails pre-validation, the page displays the failures or warnings by instrument. Where applicable, for example data is missing, select the blue arrow at the end of the failure or warning row to go to the Prepare Instrument page to make changes. If the dealing fails pre-validation, correct the errors and run the pre-validation again. A time and date stamp is recorded in the top left corner of the page to tell you when the last pre-validation was run. This brings us to the end of the prepare and pre-validate a dealing video. Thanks for watching.